butterflies love heat and they love the tropics. So moving across from warm Zimbabwe to study at this cold place was bound to affect my butterfly. I made that move just under a year ago from a country with 526 butterfly species to one with only about 50. And that, ironically, was to study biology. But there is one fascinating butterfly discovery Oxford has brought that has made it all seem worth it. Keep watching to find out what that is. Oxford University and City are rich with history and tradition. The Magdalen College Choir singing the Hymnus Eucharisticus from their tower is one such event that has taken place every year for centuries. Undergraduates and postgraduates still do formal events and exams in academic dress or subfusk. Both this word, subfusk, and the name of the rare Zimbabwean butterfly, Delonura subfusca, come from the Latin subfuscus, meaning dark brown. Oxford is packed full of magnificent ancient buildings, and as a student, I have had the privilege of working in many of them. The Radcliffe Camera, or Radcam for short, is one of the central libraries where many a biology essay has been planned and written. Nearby is the Sheldonian Theatre, the site of matriculation and home to a beautiful painted ceiling. There are countless other beautiful buildings in Oxford, filled with historical books and architecture. But by far the one that has been most fascinating for me to explore and has produced the most wonderful butterfly discoveries is this one, the Oxford Natural History Museum. The building itself is spectacular, with the columns each made of a different type of stone and botanical sculptures at their tops. But it is the natural history collections housed within this structure that fascinate me most, and we are going to have a look at some of them now. This museum contains about 6 million specimens. 5 million of those are insects, half a million are rocks and fossils, and a quarter of a million are zoological specimens. Some of my favorites are the Japanese spider crab that can stretch its arms wider than I can, the soft tissue fossils, such as this dragonfly, the insects collected by Charles Darwin, and the only soft tissue specimen of a dodo in the whole world. Of course, the highlight is the butterflies. While there are some specimens on display, such as these ones caught by Wallace, and these Papilio Dardanus, the vast majority of the Hope Entomological Collection is stored behind the scenes. Row upon row of cabinets are filled with drawers containing hundreds of thousands of specimens, many of which, including the 20,000 type specimens, are invaluable and irreplaceable. The butterflies I was most excited to find were actually in another room altogether. In fact, they were in the very room where the famous 1860 Huxley-Wilberforce debate took place. Nestled against the edge was a cabinet containing my very favourite species, Papilio Dardanus, the mocha swallowtail. There's drawers and drawers of specimens from all over Africa, many different subspecies and yeah, countless different forms. Absolutely incredible. Not only were there countless different colour forms of female Papilio Dardanus, but there were even specimens from my own country, Zimbabwe. These here are specimens bred in Zimbabwe by the famous naturalist Charles Swinerton in the early 1900s. They have come from Churinda Forest, a beautiful rainforest in the southeast of Zimbabwe, which to this day is still an awesome butterfly destination. Apart from just the sheer diversity of colours and forms, what makes these drawers of Papilio Dardanus even more interesting is the fact that many of them are organised into broods, 
This draw, for example, shows all the offspring of the white female in the top left-hand corner. The males are cream with tails, and there are three different colour forms of females among the offspring. An example of the models that each of those female forms are mimicking is also displayed. Some of the Papiliodardina specimens are even older, being caught in South Africa 150 years ago. The cherry on top of the cake of this discovery was in some of the drawers right near the bottom. Papiliodardinus gynandromorphs, genetic freaks in which part of the wings are male and parts are female. Most of these are mosaic gynandromorphs, with the male and female parts scattered randomly. But one specimen, arguably the most fascinating specimen I've seen in the Oxford Natural History Museum so far, was a bilateral gynandromorph, with its left hand wings female and its right hand wings male. Almost a year on, I definitely miss home, its people, and its butterflies. But I've also made loads of new memories, great new friends, and new discoveries. And of course, my room is decorated with Zimbabwean butterflies. <laughs> <laughs>